Balance poses. Rise all the way up, reach to the sky. Bring your hands to heart center, bring them down along your side. We call this Samastitihi. You're ready. Focal point forward. Easy tree. Plug your left foot into the floor, lift your right leg. So we're either gonna bring the foot to the ankle. If you, if, uh, no, let's stay here for one and then face them for the other. Find your focal point forward. Good. And I'm gonna let you stay here for about 30 seconds just in your breath and just try to let it go. Strip it away. Get really clear. Maybe two more breaths. And now bring the knee forward. Kick it right back to warrior three. I don't know why I put that one first. Leg all the way back. <laughs> See, Corona got him too. Corona brain got Ryan as well. He just has to get so clear now. Uh, he got so clear, right? He got completely clear. Completely empty. Keep kicking the leg back. So lift your heart here. So lift up a little bit because warrior three is really an upward bending pose. It's a back bending pose, really. So you want to keep lifting up through your chest. Good. Just take your left hand down to the ground, right hand to the sky. See how Ryan left his leg there? That's great. You don't want the leg to drop. I like to call it like a loose piece of spaghetti. You don't want it hanging like a cooked piece of spaghetti, right? You want to keep kicking that leg back. It creates energy and dynamic tension. Take the leg forward, forward fold. Find a gorilla pose. So you can stand on your hands or you can use your peace fingers, whatever feels good to you. Take an inhale, lengthen like you're doing a half lift. Good, and then fold and squeeze the shoulder blades onto your back. And just notice what it feels like here. Loosen yourself through the neck. Shifting the weight forward and back, whatever you need. Good. And rise all the way up. Back to Samastitihi. Other side. So Ryan's gonna turn forward. Yep, do the same thing on the other side. So this time, plug the right leg in and lift the left leg up. Yeah, it's a really great example. Sometimes when you're in this tree pose, the hip wants to lift high. We're really trying to work our hip down so we have a, an even plane here between the two hip bones. It's really kind of hard to do. If your feet start to cramp, really plug that big toe mound into the mat. That will help a lot. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and so Ryan just said, which is very true, he just activates his quad and his right rear end cheek, and that really helps to keep him stable. We keep the focal point forward. Sometimes it's just scuttling. I knew you were going to let that go. Pull the knee forward. And now kick it back to warrior three. Lengthen. Good, squeezing nice and tight. Lifting through the heart. Squeezing the right thigh. You can keep a little bit of a micro bend in the knee to keep it nice and safe in the joints. Take the right hand to the ground, left hand to the sky, balancing half moon pose. Just try it on for size. Fall out 500 times, get back up 501. Doesn't matter. Keeping the shoulder as open as you can. Squeezing the shoulder blade onto the back. Keep on breathing. We're gonna go here to the straddle and see where we're going. One more breath here, lengthen through the arm. You've got this. Take your hand to the floor and release the neck. Forward fold, both feet here. We're gonna take a nice straddle pose. So go ahead and walk your legs out to a straddle. No, all the way out. I was just getting a good corner. <laughs> Straddle pose. Wide-legged. 
Now take your hands to your hips, bend your knees slightly, and rise all the way up to the sky. Yeah, good. Reach your hands high. And now what I think I want you to do is turn your toes all the way out. And now drop into your goddess pose. So drop in and hold. Yeah, hold it there. So this is a really good one because you can go to your depth, you can go to whatever level you wanna be at. If you wanna be higher like me, hopefully you can see me here, just stay up here. If you wanna be really in, stay really in. So we're squeezing the elbows onto the back. And now lengthen and reach up, straighten your knees, reach to the sky, inhale. And then come back down again, exhale. Bring the elbows in. We're gonna do this five times. Inhale, exhale. Keep that ujjayi breath moving. Good. And then when you get to your fifth, we're gonna go ahead and cartwheel our hands back down to plank, move through with vinyasa, and then land on the mat with your face down. Good. Yeah, just drop down onto the mat. Bend your knees up, windshield wiper your legs. You may put this down a little so you can see. There you go. Nice. We're gonna start with a half bow pose. So go ahead and reach around with your right hand and grab the outside of your right ankle and let your left leg go long. We're just doing half, half, and then whole. Take your left arm and reach it out in front of you. Think about your breath, but also think about bringing the actioning into your foot that's placed here and your lower back and lifting through your crown. And go, lift. Good, now flex the foot towards me and keep kicking it back. See if you can take two breaths here. See if you can keep kicking your leg back and lifting your arm forward. This nice back bending pose and then come down exhale good we're gonna switch it out and do the same thing on the other side bend the leg in flex the foot plug the right toe in or the top where your shoelaces would be your sneaker laces plug that in and lift good and keep kicking keep working this that way and as you work it this way your heart lifts higher Good, try not to hold your breath. And forward fold. Right on, good. That's good. Okay, now we're gonna do the full bow. So lift both legs up. Grab onto your ankles. If you can't quite reach, just do the half. And we go up. Yeah, so really notice if you start to tense up around your shoulders, keep your jaw open, keep the shoulder blades open, keep kicking it back. And as you keep pushing, 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 your heart is lifting higher. Breathing from the sides of your ribs out in a smile, almost like on each inhale, we breathe into a smile and on each exhale, the smile comes in. You have one more breath, you can do this. And then come down, relax. Let me see you guys, you look good. The wind's kicking up a little bit, so I'm getting a little closer. Windshield wiper those legs. Nice. Push yourself up into downward facing dog. Right leg high in the sky, and now bring the knee to the nose. Go ahead and place your right foot between your hands. Drop your back knee to the floor. We're gonna do lizard. Walk your right foot all the way out towards the right hand and bring both hands inside your legs. We're doing lizard pose instead of pigeon. So your back knee can stay on the ground. Those of you that are a little more advance or you've been practicing and need the deeper stretch, you can lift your knee off the ground. You can take your forearms to a block. You can have your fingers on the ground, whatever feels good to you. But I really want you to feel the opening in that right hip. 
So walk the right foot all the way out to the outer edge of that right mat. And even if you could even have it off, if that feels good and walk yourself into this deep lizard pose. Bring the ujjayi, bring the breath forward into your practice. Clear it away. And notice what happens when we get to the poses that we either don't like or are difficult for us. We get very chatty in our head, right? But the breath only has two directions. It doesn't go in a million directions like our mind, two directions in and out, that's it. So breathe in and breathe out. Now we're gonna open up. Put your left hand on the ground, reach your right hand to the sky, and let the right knee open as much as feels good to you. So we have a demonstration here how you can roll onto the whole outer right edge, right? Open up and see if you can keep revolving back. Open through the throat, open through the heart. One more breath here, go to your maximum stretch and exhale your way back. Nice, good. Start working your way back to center and then move into downward facing dog. Yeah, pedal it out here. Take some deep knee bends. Just move around here for a few seconds. Left leg all the way up behind you. Bring the knee all the way into the nose, squeeze it and step forward. And now start walking the left foot all the way out. Really nice. So again, if you have a block, you can use a block just to demonstrate. You can put your forearms on a block, just to show them, right? or you can go right down to the ground, whatever feels good to you. Continue to breathe. Knees down or up, squeeze. We have airplanes, we have birds. Great day to be alive. And now walk your left leg out a little further. We're gonna open up. Open up that left leg, reach your right arm high. Oh, sorry, left arm high. Okay. Keep the ujjayi going, keep the breath. Okay. Any modifications? Absolutely. So yoga for everyone is literally yoga for everyone. If you're laying on your back the whole entire time, that's cool too, and you're just breathing. If you want a little more flexibility into working your quad, you can do that. And now back to downward facing dog. We're gonna land in down dog and we're gonna take five deep, long breaths in down dog. So come back to your foundation, plugging in your hands, Breathing, squeeze the deltoids onto the back, pull the belly in and up, keep working the thigh bones back. And I'm gonna be quiet here for a moment, just see where you're at. Mind, body, brain. Walk your feet to your hands and lay all the way down onto your back. Pull your knees all the way into your chest and give them a good squeeze. Really wrap the hands around the shins and really feel the compression in the hip joints as you lower your tailbone towards the ground a little bit. You can even rock back and forth to give yourself a little massage if that feels good. Pull your right knee into your chest. Let your left leg go really long. 
Get length first before you drop the heel onto the floor. And now I want you to pull your right knee into your armpit. Yeah, just pull it straight in. Yep. Just, so you're pulling it more towards the side instead of your center of your body. Yep. And now keep working the left hip down to the ground as you're pulling that right knee in. Anybody that wants the extra flexibility today, you can extend the right leg up behind your head or just stay where you are. Yeah, so Ryan's taking his peace fingers and is extending it out. But that's not for everyone, right? And then bring it back in. Now we're gonna bring the knee across the body for a deep spinal twist now. So bring the knee all the way across and just let your arms go out. I love this part of the class for a, a 60 minute when we start to break it down and we start to get a little slower. Start to really be able to, I don't know, maybe feel the difference between what we showed up with and where we ended up going. So really a good time for self-reflection and gratitude, right? And the breath, of course. And bring it back to center. And we're gonna give it another squeeze. So squeeze the body in. And both legs come up. Pop, 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 pop. And the same thing on the other side. So squeeze, which leg in? I'm not sure. Left leg in. Let the right leg go long. Keep squeezing it in. And now bring it over towards the inside of the left armpit. And the reason I do this is just so you can see the difference in the, the compression. I like to hip floss, so sometimes I'll move my knee back and forth across that joint, almost like a dental floss, but it's in the hip. It's a little hip flossing. If you wanna extend your leg, you can extend your leg. If that's in your practice and you feel like you need it. And now bring the knee across the body for a deep spinal twist. So we're opening up our arms. You might feel a pop or two there. Bring it to the breath. Bring it all the way back in to center. We're gonna move to happy baby now. Find your happy baby. Don't worry, I can't see you on the screen, so I'm not up that close to you guys. Flex your feet. Start working your knees down towards your armpits. Soften your tailbone down. Relax your jaw, notice. Notice if you started to tense up through your jaw. Keep breathing. Start rocking side to side. Those of you that have somebody with you, go ahead and say hi to that happy baby next to you. Tell them they're awesome. You're awesome. Tell yourself I'm awesome. Any last poses you have before we move to Shavasana, take those now. You might be needing a bridge pose. You might need an inversion variety of inversions you can do. Ryan has chosen to do the shoulder stand. If you just want to do waterfall, you can put the blocks underneath you and bring your legs up into the air. I'll demonstrate that. It's all crazy here at Camp Barnard. Never know what we're going to do. Right? Still want your legs to be active flexing the feet, but this is waterfall. Ryan's moved into plow pose. So take your plow. And then one vertebrae at a time, bring yourself down. And I know some of you may have to get back to work, but if you can stay in Shavasana, let's stay in Shavasana and rally after and we'll chat a little bit. So find your Shavasana. 
Take up a lot of real estate. Bring your right leg all the way out to the right side of the mat, your left leg all the way out to the left side of the mat. Ryan's choosing to do Supta Baddha Konasana, that's fine too, butterfly pose. Just find what you need, go there. And now see if you can be completely devoid of movement. And I won't say thinking because that's difficult, but maybe you can just find that emptiness to be of no mind for a short duration of time. Just using the breath to keep you centered and anchored. So stay in Shavasana for about a minute or two, and then I'll bring you back. 